welcome to another episode in this episode we will see the answer to the question what is the need of human being when god is already there with all powers god is already there with all the powers why do we need human being god can exist himself or if there are many gods then many gods can exist why should human beings be created that is the question we'll see the answer so here uh, the questioner has uh, differentiated two things one is uh, god and human beings so but you are the reality your existence is reality you exist you cannot deny it so you are there nobody can de- deny their own existence you are uh, assuming the existence of god right your existence is there whereas <coughs> god's existence you are assuming the two entities you proposed god and human beings as a human being you existed exist you are existing and you cannot deny it whereas why is god and what do you define by god what is your assumption on god or assuming that he is all powerful in the question itself you ask god is all powerful so you are assuming some entity who is all powerful but there is transcendental consciousness which is called god by man which is there everywhere and our consciousness consciousness is part of it is it different no it is not different so why this expression of pure consciousness and the consciousness of human being though both are same why this expression it is like having a your analogy i will give you an analogy it may not be exactly right like no examples are not exactly right but take the truth from it it is like having your own kid like you know you want to express your life you bring up kids who are a continuation of yourself the expression of yourself whatever your desires you cannot fulfill you express to them so in a similar fashion not exactly same but the projection of universal consciousness is the human consciousness but ultimately there is no difference externally yes it is there it is the same manifestation of god consciousness which is human consciousness but outwardly there is a separation which is the play leela or the expression so let us see the, how the idea of god form we will see some extractions or quotes from some books then who we are in the end so that will answer the question So what is God and what is human being? First is from A History of God by Karen Armstrong. Let us try the normal definition of God. What is God? God is the Supreme Spirit who alone exists of himself and is infinite in all perfections. That is the definition given by the people. God is Supreme Spirit who alone exists of himself and is infinite in all perfections yet if you look at our three religions it becomes clear that there is no objective view of god each generation has to create the image of god that works for them their ideas about god were not sacrosanct but could only be provisional they were man made they could be nothing else and quite separate from the indescribable reality they symbolized 
some develop the quite audacious ways of emphasizing this essential distinction. One medieval mystic went so far as to say that this ultimate reality, mistakenly God, was not even mentioned in the Bible. Throughout history, men and women have experienced the dimension of the spirit that seems to transcend the mundane world. Indeed, it is an arresting characteristic of the human mind to be able to conceive concepts that go beyond it in, in this way. However we choose to interpret it, this human experience of transcendence has become a fact of life. Not everybody would regard it as divine. Buddhists, as we shall see, would deny that their visions and insights are derived from a supernatural source. They see them as natural to humanity. All the major religions, however, would agree that it is impossible to describe this transcendence in normal conceptual language. Monotheists have called this transcendence God, but they have hedged this around with important provisions. Jews, for example, are forbidden to pronounce the sacred name of God and Muslims must not attempt to depict the divine in the visual imagery. The discipline is a reminder that reality, what we call ex God, exceeds human expression. In the beginning, human beings created a God who was the first cause of all things and the ruler of heaven and earth. He was not represented by images and had no temple or priest in, this, in his service. He was too exalted. He was too exalted for an inadequate human cult. Gradually, he faded from the consciousness of his people. He had become so remote that they decided they did not want him anymore. Eventually, he was said to have disappeared. That at least is one theory. Popularized by Father Wilhelm Schmidt in The Origin of the Idea of the God, first published in 1912, anthropologists suggest this, that this God has become so distant and exalted, he has in effect replaced by lesser spirits and more accessible gods. There have been many theories about the origin of religion, yet it seems that creating God is something that human beings have always done. When one religious idea ceases to work for them, it, simply, it is simply replaced. These ideas disappear quietly. That is the quote. Next, we will see a quote from Evolution of Idea of God by Grant Allen. The Manufacture of Gods, that is chapter 12 of the book. Normally and originally, I believe, all gods grow spontaneously. They evolve by degrees out of dead and deified ancestors or chief tanks. The household gods are dead of the family. The greater gods are the dead chiefs of the state or town or village. But upon the earlier and spontaneous crop of gods, there supervenes later an artificial crop, deliberately manufactured. Starting with such ideas, it is not surprising that many races should have deliberately made for themselves gods by killing a man, and especially a man of divine or kingly blood, the embodiment of God, in order that this spirit might perform some specific function. Nor is it even marked that the victim selected for such a purpose should voluntarily submit to death, often preceded by violent torture, so as to attain in the end to a position of trust and importance of tutelary deity. Buddhism and God idea, Niyana Ponika Thera. From that, you will see. Quite contradictory views have been expressed in the Western literature on the attitude of Buddhism toward the concept of God and God. From a study of the discourses of the Buddha, preserved in Pali Canon, it will be seen that the idea of personal deity 
a creator of God conceived to the eternal and omnipotent is incompatible with the Buddha's teachings. On the other hand, conceptions of impersonal Godhead of any description, such as world soul, etc., are excluded by Buddha's teaching on anatta, non-self, or, or unsubstantial substantiality. The spiritual values advocated by Buddhism are directed not towards new life in some higher world, but towards the state of utterly transcending the world, namely Nibbana. In making the statement, however, we must point out that Buddhist spiritual values do not draw an absolute separation between the beyond and here and now. An ancient verse ascribed to Buddha in the question of Questions of King Melinda says, Not far from here do you need to look. Highest existence, what can it avoid? Here in this present aggregate, in your own body, overcome the world. So not far from here do you need to look. Highest existence, what can it avoid? Here in this present aggregate, in your own body, overcome the world. The concept of God in Hinduism by Swami Krishnananda. The earlier statement of nature of reality occurs in the first book of Rigveda, Ekam Sat Vipra Bahuda Vadanti, the one being, the wise and diverse speak of. The tenth book of the Rigveda regards the highest conception of the God, both as impersonal and the personal. The Nasadiyukta Nasadiya Sukta. Nasadiya Sutta states that the Supreme Being is both unmanifest and manifest, existence as well as non-existence, the Supreme Indeterminable. Vishwasya Upanishad says that the whole universe is provided by Ishvara or God, who is both within and without it. Without it. He is the moving and the unmoving. He is far and near. He is within all these and without all this. The Kena Upanishad says that the Supreme Reality is beyond the perception of the senses and the mind because the senses and the mind can visualize and conceive only the objects, while reality is the Supreme Subject, the very precondition of all sensation, thinking, understanding, etc. No one can hold, behold God because he is the beholder of all things. The Mundaka Upanishads gives the image of Supreme Being as the one ocean into which all the rivers of individual existence enter and with which they become one as their final goal. We have seen how God has created, who is God. But who are human beings? Who are we? Who are you? Who am I? The teachings of Bhagavan Sri Ramana Maharishi. Who am I? Is the first question. The grass body, which is composed of seven humors, datus, I am not that. The five cognitive senses, the sense of hearing, touch, sight, taste, smell, which apprehend their respective objects, sound, touch, color, taste, odor, I am not that. Five cognitive sense organs, rise the organs of speed. Locomotion, grasping, excretion, and procreation, which have as their respective functions speaking, moving, grasping, excreting, enjoying, and not that. Five vital airs, prana, etc., which perform respectively the five functions of in breathing, etc., and not that. Even the mind which thinks, I am not that. The science too which is endowed only with residual impressions of objects and in which there are no objects, no functionings. I am not that. If I am none of this, then who am I? After negating all of the above mention as not this, not this, that awareness which alone remains, that I am. What is the nature of awareness? Then the nature of awareness is existence, consciousness and bliss. Your consciousness is not different from the 
supreme consciousness that is where you are not different from god god is not different from you so there are two, no no two separate entities which exist ultimately your separation is your assumption your of thoughts that is the divine place the lila with this we will end this episode stay with me for another episode subscribe to my channel thank you